Hey guys, what's up? It's me again, Tom from TDT Tom's Tech Time. Today, we want to take a look at the A mode of the DJI Phantom series. It actually does not matter whether you are using a DJI Phantom 4, Phantom 3, Phantom 2. The A mode is the same with all DJI Phantom models and it's not that complicated. Don't be afraid of anything. People might have told you it's something difficult to do. The A mode is absolutely awesome. I'm in love with it. And you will be too after watching this video. Now stay tuned. Don't forget to leave a thumb up right now. Enjoy the episode. Before we get the Phantom up in the air, let me give you a short overview of the different flight modes. The P mode, positioning mode, is the basic flight mode used for flying, filming and playing around with the intelligent flight modes. For safety reasons, it uses a GPS and GLONASS signal to hold its position in air. The S mode, sport mode, enables the super fast flight capabilities of our Phantoms for fun flights with speeds up to around 23 meters per second. It is as well GPS and GLONASS based for safety purposes. A mode stands for ATTI mode, which again stands for attitude mode. When flying in attitude mode, you can fly just as fast as with the sport mode. The main difference is that the A mode disables the usage of the GPS and GLONASS signal. The Phantom drifts with the wind, while the inbuilt barometer holds the Phantom's height, you do not have to worry about altitude drops. The ATTI mode does not overrule the no fly zones feature as the GPS module still locates the Phantom in the background even though it does not hold the Phantom's position anymore. By the way, the ATTI mode does not act as a manual mode. You cannot fly loopings, which on the other hand means you cannot go too crazy and you won't easily cause crashes to happen, which is quite nice. Okay, one last thing before we get in air. The major reasons why pilots would decide to use the ATTI mode are the following. Owners of older Phantoms can use the ATTI mode as an alternative to the Phantom 4's sport mode. You increase the flight time when flying in ATTI quite a bit as well. When flying in very cramped surroundings indoors, you might think of using ATTI over the normal GPS or VPS mode, even though the VPS, the vision positioning system of the Phantom, does a great job when it comes to stabilizing the Phantom indoors. So why would I choose ATTI? When flying through a very narrow passage, GPS could kick in for some weird reason, which sometimes causes the Phantom to correct its position a tiny little bit. And this tiny little bit could lead towards an accident in the worst situation. And that is why I use ATTI over VPS when flying through very narrow passages indoors. The main reason is a different one though. ATTI can act as a great anti-flyaway tool and it once saved a Phantom 2 Vision Plus of mine back in the days. That was really crazy. If ever your Phantom goes crazy in air and the return to home sends the Phantom to a wrong direction, you can switch into ATTI mode always and manually take over and land your Phantom safely. Before we get to the fun part, let me actually show you guys how to enable the ATTI mode as it is not available right away. First of all, we turn on the remote controller. Next, we want to turn on the Phantom itself. And right now, we switch over to our mobile device. We activate the Go app and tap at the camera button as soon as it turns blue. And once the live view is up and running. We tap at the quadcopter looking alike symbol at the top and that opens up the MC settings menu, the main controller settings menu. And in here, we enable the multiple flight modes by tapping at the slider until it turns green. And next to that, we want to pay some attention to the return to home altitude right below. And we want to add a value that is higher than the highest obstacle surrounding you. Because even though in flight in ETI mode, the Phantom is not using a GPS signal. The GPS module inside the Phantom is always running in the bag, which means that in case of a signal loss, the Phantom will travel back home safely just as it normally would, which is quite cool. But only make sure that you put a value in here that is high enough so that on the way back, the Phantom doesn't crash into anything. And that is already it, guys. And we can right now get into the flying part and um, we can bring the copter up in the air. But one more word before we get it up in the air. Um, you should always choose a wide open location, especially for your first steps in ATTI flying. And um, just to make sure 
you don't crash into anything. And next to that, right now that we are going to take off, make sure that you are taking off within the normal P mode, the GPS mode, just to make sure that once you lift the Phantom off the ground, it doesn't uh, just uh, slide or glide into something, somebody uh, surrounding the Phantom, that would be kind of mean. And um, just make sure that you are in the P mode and get the Phantom up in the air. And you can right now see that the Phantom is just hovering normally. And before you actually activate the ATTI mode, we right now want to raise its height, especially if flying within the ATTI mode for the first time. And right now we can turn the ATTI mode on. And you can see that the Phantom immediately starts following the wind path. It starts gliding around Again, once you are in trouble or you want to end the ATTI mission, nothing is simpler than that. You can always switch the toggle back to the P mode and the Phantom, as you can see, will stop and hover in air just as it normally would. And um, it's that simple. You could now have a cup of coffee, even though that is not recommended for safety purposes, of course. And there's one more thing that you should know. For example, that you are having a signal loss um, when the Phantom is in a 20 meters radius, it won't come back home safely, but that is due to the normal return to home function. It would land. So right now, for demonstration purposes, I switch back over to the ATTI mode and fly the Phantom away a few meters. Okay, there we go. And right now, I'm going to turn the remote controller off. Let's just see what happens. Remote controller is turned off. The Phantom stops immediately. We can see that. It now raises height to 40 meters as we said it before it just turns around and there it goes and right now you could of course i don't know turn the remote controller back on or if the signal comes back you are back in charge you could always cancel the return to home and now finally i only want to recommend to do the entire landing procedure in the normal P mode again, because otherwise, let me just get the Phantom down. Maybe I can demonstrate that. Now the Phantom is still in the ATTI mode, and we can see that the Phantom is gliding around. And if now a wind gust comes up, the Phantom could travel back a lot faster or could hit someone. And that's why we always want to make sure that we do the entire landing procedure within the normal GPS mode as we now do not have to worry about weird movements of the Phantom. And catching the Phantom in air is not recommended as well, but I do it that way because I think it's safer than the normal landing procedure if you know how to do it. If you are not Enrique Iglesias, which is quite fun actually, you should Google that, Enrique Iglesias Inspire 1, I think. It's not fun, but I mean, you shouldn't grab uh, an Inspire in flight if you don't know how to get that stuff done. So guys, thank you for watching this awesome tutorial of mine. Always make sure that you do the first steps in wide open field and take it easy, choose a calm day and stuff like that. It's, I don't know, that's just normal way of thinking. And once you know how to operate within the ATTI mode, I think you will be pretty good to go um, in case of fly away or when flying indoors or something like that. It's pretty simple, don't be afraid. Right now you should leave a thumb up, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment or check out facebook.com slash group slash Tom's Tech Time, join the awesome community. And what else is there to say? Check out Tom's Tech Time.com slash blog because my blog is something new and I am adding new content to it almost weekly, <laughs> I must say. So if you're an awesome author and want to write something for my blog, you could as well contact me. Um, I just can't write an article every single day. And this was it. This was Tom from TDD Tom's Tech Time. It was awesome to teach you guys something new. Stay tuned, fly safe. I was recording this like, I don't know, 15 times. There was always a technical error from some side. The sun was too bright or the camera was not running or the screen recorder was showing an error or something like that. It's quite a crazy day. And right now I am going to enjoy the rest of the day flying. Have a great day. Stay tuned, fly safe.